Robert Boog is with us today. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you, Tim? I'm doing great today. Now, you've got a new book called Shaky's Madness. What's the idea behind that book, first of all? Well, it's, the subtitle is uh, Does a Mental Disorder Reveal the Real William Shakespeare? Mm, interesting. And what mental disorder are we talking here? We're talking about bipolar disorder. Yeah, interesting. So how come you're so interested in William Shakespeare? What got you into him? Is he as big in America as he is over here? Uh, yeah, I took a class in college and um, the instructor kind of tricked me. Uh. She uh, gave me an A on one of my papers and told me that I made some observations about Shakespeare that she really liked. Oh. So uh, that's probably what, what hooked me into uh, Shakespeare. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I always kind of assumed that maybe he would only be known in Britain, but is he well known in America or is he more niche? Yes, he's very well known in America too. So um, a lot of people, uh, you know, really enjoy his, his works here. Yeah. So who's this book aimed at? Is it a particular audience that you're trying to kind of explain his mental illness to? It's a general audience. Um, it seems to me that currently bipolar disorder is like a silent epidemic. Yeah. Um, I got into it because I was watching TV during the lockdown and I noticed this commercial for Latuda that kept on popping. You know, whenever I ch changed the channels, even I'd see, see this gal hawking Latuda. And I wondered, what is Latuda? And I Googled it. And, um, and I was wondering, like, how much does it cost? Yeah. And it turns out it costs $1,500 a month for a 30 day, you know, subscription. And um, it treats bipolar disorder. And later that day, I was doom sc scrolling on Twitter and I heard this guy talking. Uh, oh, uh, he was reading a sonnet. And it occurred to me that it seemed like Shakespeare could have used some Latuda and that mm -hmm. I kind of put two and two together and I, I thought I'd write a book about it. Yeah, absolutely. That's so interesting. So what exactly does the book cover in it? Is it different aspects of his life and struggles or kind of more about the disorder itself? Well, William Shakespeare is pretty much a mystery. Mm. There's not very much known about the man from Stratford upon Avon. Yeah. He wrote no letters. Here's the weird thing. He lived in London, which is a hundred miles away from Stratford upon Avon. Yeah. And his wife lived at the family home with their uh, three children, but he never wrote a single letter to her. Mm. And I guess he didn't have to because she was illiterate. And so <laughs> were his daughter. So, uh, that's kind of weird, though, if you think about it. I mean, if you were the world's greatest writer, wouldn't you want your kids to read your 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 works? Yeah, that is weird. The world's greatest writer, but their children and wife are illiterate. But I don't know, maybe it was more common in those days to be illiterate, perhaps. Well, that got me thinking, like, maybe he's not the real author. Oh, are you talking Bacon? Sir Francis Bacon makes sense. However, what I've found is that the, or the problem with him is that he did not believe in Copernicism. Oh. He did not at all. And if you read uh, Hamlet, he talks about the whole universe being in a nutshell, right? Yeah. I mean, so that is kind of like a Copernican idea that the that space is infinite. Hmm. And um, and Sir Francis Bacon was totally against that. So it cannot be Sir Francis Bacon, yeah. and it cannot be uh, Christopher Marlowe either, because Christopher Marlowe was not fond of women, uh. and he plus he died in like 1593, <laughs> so uh, kind of stops him there. Mm. The only one that really makes sense is this guy, the 17th er uh, Earl of Oxford, Edward de Vere, oh. and why it makes more sense for, him, for his aspect is that de Vere inherited a, a fortune that today would be worth like 70 million dollars yeah and he, when he inherited at, at 21 he just started spending money like crazy <laughs> he was completely out of yeah it was out of money by age 30 hmm. so um that 
but that is one of the um, signs of, of bipolar disorder. Yeah. When someone, someone is excessively spending money and uh, then you read about other things he did. He, he was really reckless. <laughs> I mean, he was kind of crazy. And the more and more you read about Edward Devere, the more you realize that, you know what, it, it kind of sounds like he had bipolar disorder. Yeah. And I think I did hear, I think it was William Shakespeare, another person that people kind of theorise about, about his wife writing that. But obviously that can't be true if she was illiterate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So why do we think that he didn't write his books? What's the problem standing in the way of William Shakespeare? Well, there's a couple of problems. Mm. Um, number one, he never went to Italy uh -huh. and 13 of the plays happened in Italy, right? Yeah. And what's weird, too, is that it's people say, well, he just read some books or he saw a map. But the thing is, is that like in uh, The Merchant of Venice, mm. Shylock mentions something like, I'll see you on the Rialto. And the Rialto is actually a bridge. So how would someone know about a bridge? Because the, that's not shown on a map and it's not mentioned in books. But he might have known someone that's went to Italy. Yeah, well, here's the thing. I mean... Uh, people that are fond of or what are, what I call Stratfordians or mm. people that really like William Shakespeare, of, they're, they're diehards. They do not want to believe that, you know, <laughs> that he is not the author. I mean, so they will come up with all these kinds of excuses or these. Uh, I mean, that's just one of the things. I mean, um, there, there are tons of little, little um, questions if you start investigating it and that's what this book hopes uh to do is get people involved in looking at the evidence like with uh, an open mind yeah and there was a really good um documentary that started me on my quest and i saw it in uh, on christmas day of 2019 mm. and it's called uh, nothing is truer than true oh and in this documentary they retraced the, um, at, okay, so back in 1575, uh, the Earl of Oxford was 25 years old, and he took a tour of Italy, yeah. and um, he ended up living there for a year and a half, <laughs> roughly. So he took a tour of Italy, and they, in this documentary, they retraced that tour. Yeah. And what's interesting is, like, they, when they went to Ver Verona, which we remember Verona because of Romeo and Juliet, right? Yeah. And in that play, um, Shakespeare talks about a grove of sycamore trees that are like west of the city. <laughs> and you're on this boat and there you see a, a grove of sycamore trees that are still there wow. because trees live, you know, for over 450 years. Yeah. So it's kind of like little details like that that make you realize the real per the real author had to have been in Italy. Yeah, that's odd. Unless those sycamore trees were planted there because of the book. Um, again, another excuse. Kind yeah. of, is there, and and that's the thing. Everybody, uh, ha you, you, you kind of have to see the thing because there <laughs> there's a totality of things. Yeah, like um, there's well um, this person who was a um, a famous sculptor and i can't remember his name yeah. but um he's mentioned in one of the plays as being a painter and uh stratfordian said no he he was he was not a sculptor he was a painter so, something like that and there you see you know yeah. uh, several of his sculptures <laughs> so um there's just a lot of little yeah I mean, it's all very fascinating, and I'll probably take the time one day to do a full investigation of it. Probably, you got to. Yeah, you really do. It's where it'll be worth your time. Plus, yeah. it's kind of fun. Yeah, and so much of the stuff you can see online now too, mm. like even just uh, like the the name William Shakespeare. Yeah, he was he was baptized Gilliamus. Oh, so, oh yeah. The, he, so his name was never. I mean, people say, well. Uh, Gilliamus is Latin for William, yeah. which is true. And then these, uh, you know, scholars or academics will say um, 
that that's the reason why it's Gilly Animus. Yeah. But the thing is, is that or let's say everything on that page was written in Latin, but then right above his name is a guy named William, and mm-hmm. right below it is William. So you know that the father could have said William if he wanted to, but he didn't. Yeah. And so there's just a lot of little things like that. Uh, anyway. Um, yeah. I mean, why do you think that he did it? Was he a thief or was he just paying somebody to sort of go straight for him? <laughs> no, I think what happened is that um, this guy, Edward DeVere, was the real writer, yeah. but he was mad. Oh. Or back then they would call it mad. If you were schizophrenic yeah. or, or bipolar, people back then, the um, they would put you into a dark room and whip you. Oh. So they wanted to, it was kind of like, you know, beat the devil out of you kind of thing. Mm. So the treatment back then was really harsh. Yeah. So um, I don't think that, and, and also if you think about it today, if you have a friend, with bipolar disorder, they're going to be a complainer or they're going to, you know, they're going to be a little off. They're, they're not going to be the normal kind of person. And I think that he was just kind of like high maintenance that the queen really didn't want to. I I think that she just basically told him, look, uh, you can write all you want, but you just can't put your name on, on anything (laughs) because I don't want, you know, uh, a crazy person to be known for writing plays in my uh, cabinet or my royal court or wh- whatever she called it. Mm, yeah, absolutely. So, how long did it take you to write this whole book? <laughs> uh, I'm kind of a fast writer, yeah. so it it doesn't take me long. I'm more of a rewriter, oh. so I kind of like, um, you know, I I don't like to answer that question because I it doesn't. It, I do not spend like years of my time researching <laughs> and uh, <laughs> things yeah. like that. I, I do not. I, I write quickly. Uh. Um, so um, it didn't take me <laughs> very long. Yeah. I mean, you kind of research as you go. Well, isn't that the fun of it, though? Yeah, I mean, I think so. and, and again, these days with Google, you can you can double check everything in my book. Oh yeah, and I encourage you to do that. So if you want to say this guy's full crap, <laughs> you you can just Google it yeah. and see for yourself, and then you might be uh, surprised yeah. that some of the stuff it's it's not what you've learned or w- what you've been told when you're a kid. Yeah, like you know, I I was always told that Shakespeare was this boy genius who. Uh, you know, he hailed from Stratford upon Avon, yeah. and I, that's how I, I always thought he was. But, and I think that academics like to keep that because it's a, a it kind of like makes it less snobbish. You know, yeah. it it allows anyone to be a Shakespeare kind of thing. Yeah. But the truth is, is that sometimes what we think, like we might think the world is flat, mm. but if you look at it differently from a different view, you see the world is round. You know, and um, similarly, um, if you look at the author as being, well, maybe he was a rich guy who was mental, then that brings the discussion back to mental health. And yeah. um, what I what I say is it's it's a silent epidemic. You know, two to three percent of the world's population has bipolar disorder. Hmm. And that's why these commercials for Latuda keep running. Yeah, and if you think about it, fifteen hundred dollars a month—that's a lot of money for um, medicine that helps people live just a, a normal life. Yeah, and isn't there a way that we can get these things uh, this price down? Mm. And the scary part of it is that the symptoms of bipolar disorder—you know—when they uh, start to manifest when? between the ages of nineteen to twenty-five, something like that. Wow. So. You, you don't have it as a kid. It's it, like all of a sudden it kind of like jumps in on you. Yeah. And um, you you may not know it. People think, you know, teenagers are a little crazy anyway or college students. Yeah. You know, this is just, <laughs> you know, somebody having a, a hazing, uh, you know, something that uh, girls go wild or something like that. Yeah. But um, it's it could be something much more serious. 
Yeah, absolutely. That's very interesting. And do you have any more books planned coming out soon that you're maybe thinking of doing? I'm thinking of doing a um, maybe a collection of short stories or something, just doing mm. something completely off the, the beaten track. Yeah. Um, just for the heck of it. I haven't ever done that. So that's something that might be of interest. Oh, yeah, that sounds exciting. And do you know the name of the second person to be vaccinated against COVID in the UK? I believe it was William Shakespeare, right? Yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> That's my wild guess, at least. Yeah, I mean, I'm surprised he wasn't the first person because, like, how old he must be? He must be 500 years old now, William Shakespeare. <laughs> well, you know who it was? The first guy was Edward de Vere. I mean, he was the real Shakespeare, right? Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if we're interested in having a little read of your book and finding out all about this bipolar Shakespeare, where can we find the book? You can find it on Amazon.com and it's being sold as a Kindle book for like $4.75. Nice. Which is about what you'd pay for a good cup of coffee here in the US. Uh, but yeah. Um, yeah. It's also available on my website, which is robertboog.com. Nice. Well, thank you very much for coming on the show today. It's been great talking to you. Oh, thanks. You too, Toby.